Hey guys, it's Charles Jager from Metal. Today we're going to take a look at how we can get better stabilization results using SynthEyes and then exporting that tracking data to use with Metal Skybox plugins in After Effects. Now we can track our 360 footage and stabilize it using the Skybox plugins in After Effects. However, when we use those methods to track our footage, we're limited to a Skybox Composer viewport, so we can only really track one section of our 360 video. When we do that, a lot of times we can get good results, but occasionally you may need to track the entire 360 video if you have a lot of stuff going on or if there's a lot of movement back and forth or different things coming in and out of the shot. You may need to track the entire 360 shot. And in order to do that, you're going to need dedicated tracking software, and that's where SynthEyes comes in. I haven't been using SynthEyes that long, but I found it's really easy to use, especially if you've already used some of the Skybox plugins and After Effects. You should be able to figure it out pretty quickly, and if you just follow along with this tutorial, you'll be able to import your footage, track it, and again, export that to After Effects to use with Metal Skybox plugins. And as always, you can download free trials of Skybox plugins from Metal.com. Today we're going to be using the Skybox Converter and the Skybox Rotate Sphere Effect. And you can also download a demo version of SynthEyes from their website, SunTech.com. And we'll also have a link for that in the description. I think you guys are going to be shocked with the results we're able to get using this method. I was really pleased with the results I've seen so far. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, once you've downloaded SynthEyes, I just went ahead and opened up the program. This is what the interface of it looks like. It has a very mainstream interface, and I like that. It makes it very easy to find things and get things done very quickly. Now, what we're going to do first is stabilize a shot that I've got of me walking. I'm just going to go through the steps I did to stabilize that shot. And then after we do all that, we're going to jump back into SynthEyes, and I'll show you a couple extra tips that you might run into with different situations. All right, so let's go ahead and import that shot. So I'm going to go here to File, Import Shot. And I've got my footage right here, so I'm just going to select that and click Open. And that's going to pop up your import settings here, and you're going to notice that immediately it does detect that this is a 360 VR mode shot. And that's because it's at a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. And for the frame rate, I'm going to go ahead and click NTSC because this footage is 29.97. And all these other settings look pretty good, so I'm just going to click OK. All right, now we can see the shot. It has imported and secret rectangular here, and I'm walking down this white gravel road. And I've got a Samsung Gear 360 with a monopod. I'm just kind of holding it up about four feet above my head. And I've got my dog with me here. So we've got a couple different things we're going to have to look at when we want to stabilize this shot. Now, if you notice down here at the bottom, we have kind of red and gray lines here. And what that's doing is caching the frames for this shot. And so once all of this is gray, that means the entire shot's been loaded in. You can kind of preview it. Right now, we can go ahead and preview some of it, but it may stop during the preview. So I'll just go ahead and click play here. And now we can see kind of a sped up version of me walking down the road. And again, that's stopping just for a second as it caches those frames. I'm just going to let that load. All right, so let's go ahead and preview this shot. You can see I'm walking down the gravel road. And it's I kept the camera fairly stable, but again, I just kind of did it in a real world situation where there's going to be some movement. And that's the thing with 360 video. Really, any movement's going to show up on the shot. And there's no way to really kind of stabilize it with the sensor because we're recording the entire 360. And so what we're going to do with SynthEyes is we're going to track this entire eco rectangular shot and it's going to take that tracking information and we're going to apply a script to it that's included with SynthEyes that will stabilize the video based on that tracking data, much like Metal Skybox Composer does in After Effects. Except in our case here, we're going to actually be tracking the entire 360 shot. All right, before we get started with our tracking, though, we need to roto out a few things that could mess up the track, particularly myself, because I'm actually going to be moving with the camera. So any tracking points that land on me that's going to potentially mess up the track. Also, my dog back here is moving in our shadows. Anything that would mess up the track that's not moving in the general direction here of the shot. So if your shot has like cars or other people or flags or trees blowing in the wind, you may need to roto those out as well. And in some cases, you may need to roto out the entire sky if any clouds are moving particularly fast. In my case here, most of the sky is blown out. So I'm not going to really roto anything on the sky, but I will show you that a little bit later. But fortunately for us, the rotoing on this is really easy to do, and it's not too finicky because we have all this other data. So I'm just going to put my indicator back at the very beginning, and I'm going to click on the Roto Masking tab up here. Now I'm just going to select the Circle Mask, and I'm just going to click and drag over kind of the general area where I am. It's going to cover me up and my shadow here. And my dog right now is inside of this Circle Mask, but I've already done this shot once before. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a Square Mask on top of the dog, and I'll track that with the dog but I think that this right here is gonna pretty much cover everything we need. And what's good about this is automatically gonna create keyframes as we move through the shot. So I'm just gonna click down here and drag the current time indicator forward. 
and I'm just going to reposition a few things and it's automatically going to create keyframes for any changes we do. So this is really easy to do. And I'll just do this in real time just so you can see it. My shadow's getting outside the edge there just a little bit. Keep moving forward here. Tighten this up. Keep this over the dog. Now I'm kind of turning and looking back, so I need to adjust everything a little bit more here. And like I said, if your roto mask are a little bit large on your shot, that's okay because with 360 video, we have all this other data over here that is not being affected by our roto masking. So Okay, I'm go ahead and play this back and we can see that those masks stay with everything and cover everything up pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna hit stop. Now, one other thing we need to do before we apply our track, I'm gonna click on the features tab up here and under advanced, I can select the minimum and maximum amount of trackers that are gonna be on this shot. By default, it's 12 and 120. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that for this 360 shot. So for the minimum, I'm gonna type in 100. And for the maximum, I'm gonna type in 400 and just click X to keep those. Now we can get to actually tracking our shots. I'm gonna come over to summary and I'm gonna click on the run auto tracker. And that's gonna go ahead and track our footage. And now we can see all these different track points on our shot. I'm just gonna click play here to kind of preview that and kind of see the track points. And I can see that they're on everything there. That looks pretty correct. Now in order to solve this track, all we need to do is come over to the solve button and click solve. And now this is going to go through and actually solve the shot, apply different iterations to the shot in order to get the minimal amount of pixel error. For a shot like this, this will usually take about a minute or two. All right, that's done solving, so I'm just going to click OK. And now we can see all of these different track points on our shot. And we're looking at this from the Solver tab now. That's automatically going to open up when the solve finishes. And we have kind of three other 3D views up here of our shot, which are really cool. So I'm just going to zoom in on the top view here. And you can see this is an actual view of what this would look like actually in 3D space. So if I go ahead and just kind of scroll through here, you can see the camera animating. I zoom in a little closer. There's the camera, it's green there. You can see that moving through the shot and that's actually me walking up and down the road there. And I can see just from this 3D solve with these points that that is correct. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump back over to the summary tab. And now we can come down and look at the overall pixel error we have right now. And it is 2.76 for this 360 shot. Now on normal footage, that would be a pretty high pixel error number, but for 360 shots, it's typically gonna be a little bit higher just because there's so much going on. And based on my previous results, this is pretty good. Now if we go ahead and play this right now, you're gonna notice that it is not stabilized yet. And that's because we need to run a 360 script on this shot, which is really easy to do. So I'm just gonna hit stop here. And in order to do that, we just come up to script and 360 VR, and you're gonna see the option for VR360 stabilized from camera path, and I'm just gonna click that. And that's just gonna take it a second to load, and you're gonna notice at the bottom, everything turned red down here on our timeline. And that is because it's recaching all of the frames, stabilizing them from the camera view. So this might take about a minute or two for all those frames to cache. And when they do, we'll go ahead and preview the shot again. All right, all the frames are done caching, so let's go ahead and preview this. And now we can see a pretty mind-blowing result here from a handheld 360 shot on a rocky gravel road, just how stabilized this shot now is. And we did this in about five minutes time or less. And so that's pretty astounding that we're able to get a result like this so quickly. So now what we need to do is we need to export this tracking data so we can use it in After Effects with our metal plugins. And this step is also very easy to do. We just come here to file, come down to export, and you're gonna see 360 VR, and you're gonna see Skybox AE 360 VR Stabilizer. Now this export option is only available when you purchase Synthize, but when you do, you'll get a link to a customer-only area where you can install the Skybox exporter. So all you need to do now, I'm just gonna click on that. And now I can go ahead and name this file, so I'm just gonna call it Stable Walking. And click Save. And it's gonna pop up a few settings here that we can select. And for the export action, it's gonna do a new project and open it right now. And it's gonna open it up in your latest version of After Effects CC. So I'm just gonna leave this as is and click OK. 
And we're going to notice that it's immediately going to open up After Effects. All right, so now After Effects is opened. And now we can see our shot in After Effects. And what Synthize has done is it creates a script. It exports a script, actually, that then opens up in After Effects. And what we can see, it's imported in our original shot. And it's created this new composition with our shot. And if we select the shot, I'm going to come over to Effect, Controls. And we can see it has Skybox Rotate Sphere applied to the shot. And we can see we have keyframes for all of the tilt, pan, and the roll. So I'm going to select my footage and just hit U here so we can see what's going on. Now you can see there's settings imported for the tilt, pan, and roll for every frame of this shot. And that is the stabilization that was applied in Synthize. It's now been exported and applied in After Effects using Skybox Rotate Sphere. So it's really cool that we have this stabilization capability and then we can export it to After Effects and apply any other post effects or color correction stuff we want to do on our 360 footage. Now in my case here on this shot, we can see whatever's facing right here forward is going to be what the user's facing when they watch this shot in 360. And so instinctively, I would want them to be facing down the roadway here, not facing toward the side of the road. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to come back to the project and I'm going to select that composition that was already created in After Effects. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Enter and rename that. I'm just going to call that Stable Walking. And I'm going to select that composition and add it to a completely new composition. And so now we have that composition inside of here. And I'm just going to select that and apply Metal Skybox Converter. And so now with Skybox Converter applied to this shot, I can go ahead and reorient the camera view. And I'm going to rotate it on the pan axis here. And I might tilt it up a little bit. And now if we go ahead and ramp preview this, we can see that now the shot has been reoriented to where it's facing the center. All right, so now we can see that's been reoriented here. And that's how easy it is to correct things that have been tracked and synthesized and exported. We can easily correct those using Skybox Converter or Skybox Rotate Sphere, either one, whatever your preference is. However, with Skybox Converter, if I wanted to change the output to another format, I could easily do that. So I could select a cube map here, and now we can see we have our stabilized shot exported onto a cube map, so that's really cool. And that's really all there is to it. If we want to, we can go ahead and export this shot out. So I'll change this back to equal rectangular, and I can just go to the render queue, to my project, and I'll just export the new stable walking to, and then I can just import my render settings and render that out. All right, let's briefly jump back into Synthize. I want to cover a few quick things that you might run into when you're tracking your shot. All right, now we're back in Synthize, and I've got another shot here of me on a zip line. First thing I wanted to show you was the rotoing the sky option here. So what I would typically do with this shot is I would use a circle roto mask, and I would cover myself up here, and I'll probably also mask out the actual line itself because that's not going to actually move as time progresses, and that can mess up the track. And if I was going to do that, I would just use a square spline, I would just re-angle this over the zip line. But I quickly want to show you how to roto out the sky, and what you would do with that is also use a square spline and just select the entire upper half of the video. That is if you have enough tracking data down here, but this would be an easy way to get rid of the sky, because in this case here, there's a little bit more defined clouds. Now I'm actually not going to use this mask when I track this shot, because I want to show you how to delete some track points. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that real quick. And now I'm just going to go ahead and track this shot just so we can see those track points. So I'm just going to run the auto tracker. And I'm going to skip ahead when this finishes. All right, so I finished tracking that shot, and I intentionally didn't apply any mask over the zip line or the sky, just so we can kind of see some track points that we might want to get rid of. And so you can see as I scroll through here, we can look at all the different points on the shot, and I definitely do have some points up here in the sky. Now, one quick tip you can do that I like to do, when you go ahead and play this back, you're going to notice that the track points all kind of move in sort of a uniformed way for equal rectangular video. And it's a little bit difficult to see right now with the actual background on. So I'm going to hit stop here. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go to view. I'm going to turn off show image. Now we can only see the points. And right now this really doesn't look like anything much. But when we go ahead and play this back, you can kind of see the movement of the points. And you can look for sporadic ones that really don't match. Now in this case of this shot, there's just a lot of movement overall. So it's kind of hard to focus in on that. But if you do see any points that you don't like, you could always right click on them. And I know that this one right here is up in the sky for this case. So I can select that point. I'm just going to right click and delete it. Delete selected. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to turn back on the background image so we can look for any other points that might appear in the sky. So we have a couple, actually a lot right here. 
So I'm just going to click and drag and select all of those points. And just right click and delete the selected again. And so I'm going to do that for a bunch of these over here in the sky. And if you wanted to, you could go through, obviously, and do this for any others that pop up. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I just want to show you how you can do that. And once you delete those, then you can come back over here. If you've done the Run Auto Tracker, now we can go ahead and click Solve. And it's going to solve the shot without adding in those that we deleted. So that's why it's good to always do the Auto Tracker first, and then look at your points, and then do the Solve. All right, just to skip ahead here and show you something else that you might run into, uh, this is the zipline shot where I actually did a lot of different masking on the shot to try to get the best result possible. And I got an error down here of around two pixels here. So that's pretty good for this shot considering how much movement that was happening. And I went ahead and ran the script 360 to stabilize it from the camera path. That's why some of the masks right now are not actually on the objects directly because it's already been stabilized. And so I can go ahead and scroll through here and we can see that it has been stabilized. So now I want to go ahead and export this. Now let's say you wanted to export this, but you didn't want to open it up in After Effects immediately. You want to open it up later. I want to show you how you can do that. So I'm just going to go to File, Export, and 360 VR, Skybox AE 360 VR. I'm just going to call this 360 Zipline. And that's what the name of the script is going to be that's going to create. We can see our other script that we created earlier, the stable walking one. And that's what is being exported from Synthize. So I'm just going to click Save. And now when the stabilizer settings pops up here, I'm going to select new project, don't run. So it's not going to open up After Effects immediately when we save this. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And now I went ahead and saved that script. So now let's go ahead and jump into After Effects and see how we can run that script if we need to run it later. All right, so now we're inside of After Effects. And in order to run that script, it's really easy to do. We just come here to File and Scripts and just select Run Script File. Now we just need to locate where that script file was saved from Synthize. In this case, I've got the 360 zip line here, so I'm just going to select Open. And now you're going to see it's automatically going to import the footage from our shot and that comp with the stabilization applied to it. And again, that stabilization has been applied via the Skybox Rotate Sphere effect with all of the keyframes. So I can just select it and hit U. And we can see all the different keyframes it has for every frame of the shot. And now we have a stabilized shot. And I'll go ahead and level this out again here really quickly. I'll just select that comp, add it to a new one. And I'm just going to apply the effect Metal Skybox Converter. And I'm just going to reorient things here on the tilt and the roll. And that's how easy it is to stabilize our shot in Synthize and then import it into After Effects to use with our Skybox plugins. Hopefully you guys picked up some tips from this tutorial. I think the results that you can get from this are pretty astounding. Again, this has been Charles Jager with Metal. Thanks for watching.